Hi everyone, I'm Max Marginot, and I'm here to talk about factor quantile turnover. Turnover in general is an important feature to consider whenever you're constructing an algorithmic trading strategy. You want your turnover to be high enough such that you're getting observations about your strategy. You're actually completing bets that your strategy is taking so you can see whether it's actually in line with your research. But you don't want your turnover to be so high that you're incurring a lot of slippage and commissions costs. Every single time that we go to trade, every single time that we go to liquidate and, and re-up some part of our portfolio, we're going to be incurring commissions costs due to dealing with our broker. Every single time you make a buy or make a sell, you have to pay some additional fee. And then slippage is every single time you operate within the market, the market moves in some way against you. This is exhibited in kind of like a microcosm when you're looking at a cross-sectional equity portfolio and specifically the factor that makes up that portfolio. A cross-sectional equity portfolio is constructed by taking a factor value for every single security in your universe and basically going long on the securities that have the top quantile of factor values and short on the securities that have the bottom quantile of factor values. Now, we evaluate this using alpha ones uh, just to check and see the turnover of these individual quantiles, check the predictive power of a given factor. So alpha lens doesn't actually include commissions and slippage costs, but it has a number of plots and a number of statistics that you can look at to get a sense of whether you're going to incur some slippage costs later, uh, just during this analytical research step. Namely, we have the factor quantile turnover plot, which says, for each individual quantile, how many names remain in it from period to period? How many names are switching out of that quantile into another quantile? And this is important because we need to have some sort of sense of the stability of our factor, right? We want to make sure that, well, this factor is determining which securities we're going long and short on. And if the factor value of one security or a set of securities are oscillating between the top and bottom quantiles or many different individual quantiles repeatedly, then we're going to be incurring a lot of slippage and commissions costs. It's kind of like forewarning us whether we're going to be running into these additional costs. Along with the factor quantile turnover, we have this factor rank autocorrelation, which basically says this is the autocorrelation of my factor value with itself, right? We basically take uh, the time series of factor values and a lagged time series of factor values and we correlate them. So what this is saying is how predictive is my previous quantile for a given factor of the next quantile? Is it staying within the same basket on average? And this kind of in conjunction with this factor quantile turnover plot give us a sense of how stable our factor value is, how consistent things are across the board in our research step. Now keep in mind that both the factor quantile turnover plot and the factor rank autocorrelation plot are done without any sense of slippage or commissions. This is an analytical way to evaluate a factor. But this is a good way to get a sense of, if you have many different factors, how stable are these individual factors? How fast moving are they? Is there a lot of turnover? What sort of rebalancing scheme should we be looking at when we actually go and implement this factor in a backtest? 